Good morning. Good morning. Good rainy morning. But I'm going to tell you the sun is shining, the God's love sun is shining on all of us, and that is a blessing. So my name is Pastor Tim. I'm pastor here at Royal Oak Community United Methodist Church. It is a blessing to be with you this morning. According to our Facebook statistics, we have about 72 people that join us every Sunday in worship, and that is a blessing. So tell your friends, and while you're telling your friends, tell them this. We are a community of faith that brings the love of God into our community in so many ways. And we do this not because we're geniuses, but because we have learned to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. And so with the voice of the Holy Spirit, we have a, some thank you notes I want to read to you this morning. This first one is from the Talbot Interfaith Shelter. Thank you so much on behalf of everyone at the Talbot Interface Shelter for your recent donation in support of our mission. We are humbled and blessed by the continued support from your congregation, particularly as we prepare to expand our services to assist more of our neighbors with deep gratitude. Wow. You've been hearing over the last several weeks about our Valentine's deliveries and our Bags of Hershey's Kisses deliveries and our Valentine's Day card deliveries. Well, the Chesapeake Adult Day Center sent us this letter. On behalf of the individuals and staff and board of directors, I want to take this opportunity to acknowledge the receipt of the wonderful Valentine's Day cards made by your church's youth group for our individuals. We are most grateful for your donation, which will further the programs of Chesapeake Center and benefit those we support as they strive for independence. And then there's a handwritten note, thank you so much, they are so beautiful. And finally, we have another, well, Yes, it's the St. Michael's Police Department. They got one of our care bas large care baskets of, of uh, let me just say, um, energy bars and snack foods and cases of water. Thank you so much for the generous basket of snacks and drinks given in support of our officers. Our agency works hard to partner with the community it serves. It is my philosophy that 90% of what a police department performs should be community policing. Your support means so much. And that's from Chief Anthony Smith. So this is who we are. We are a beloved worshiping community that gathers each Sunday to lift up the people in our community and to be a blessing for everyone we serve. We're also a community that has a pastor that can't, oh, here it is, good. Had to find my notes. Okay, and um, as we gather to worship this morning, I just want to quote to you the words of Professor Lawrence Hall Stuckey. This is an astonishing quote. The whole of worship puts the entire contemporary community of faith in touch with all of reality, past present and future. And last week when we did our communion and next week when we do it again, we have our statement of faith. Christ has died in the past. Christ is risen in the present and Christ will come again and that is the future. So as Professor Stuckey says, we are gathered this morning to be transformed in our faith and our worship as we touch the past, the present, and the future. Some announcements. If you haven't already discovered it, we have a new, wonderful, fun to use Royal Oak Community website. You can find it at rocumc.org. Our website has been completely redone due to the monumental efforts of our not only uh, website person, but sound tech and video tech person, Bruce. Thank you. 
Um, we're having an administrative board meeting this Wednesday. I will be emailing out Zoom links. If you're not on our email list and you want to participate or just listen in, text me, call me, voicemail me, email me, and I'll get you the link. And also on Thursday, our worship committee is meeting. Same thing. All are welcome. Both of those meetings are at 7.30 on Zoom, and we will be emailing out the links to you before the meetings. So, we have 17 online worship experiences every week. Join us. Later today on our Facebook page, I'll put up the Zoom link for our Joy in the Morning meeting, although I was just told that that's on our website. Yes. Yes. Okay. Go to our website, check it out. And that is a Zoom meeting. It's interactive. It's like having breakfast and prayers and joys and concerns and fellowship all in one giant bowl of porridge. It's fun. Um, noon, noon devotion, Monday through Friday. And that is taking time out of our day just to put the brakes on and reconnect with God. And at 6 o'clock, Monday through Friday, on our Facebook page, Bedtime Bible Stories. And we just read Bible stories. We read stories of inspiration and faith. And what a great way to stop your day or end your day. 12 o'clock this afternoon, we are having Kids Church. Also on our Facebook page, be there. Was that too directive? I don't know. Maybe I got a little over-enthusiastic. Okay, we'd like it if you came. So, um, we have a food pantry. Our food pantry is going strong. It is almost one year old. It has been developed and developed and developed. It's now 24-7. We have it in a room that's lit from the outside 24 hours a day and the inside 24 hours a day. Check it out. If you need food, uh, mostly canned goods, non-perishables. It's on the right side of our church. If you'd like to help us with our food pantry and all of the many, many, many ministries we do, please write a check and send it to P.O. Box 126, Royal Oak, Maryland, 21662, or go to our new website and click on the Make a Donation, which is the Tithely link, and then you'll be set up. If anyone has anything they want me to announce for next Sunday, please text me, voicemail me, email me, and I will make those announcements for you. Well, let us not be held back any longer. Let us have our opening prayer. Dear God, your son Jesus bore the cross for our salvation. So please give us the courage to take up our cross and follow him so that through grace we may accept the cost of faithful discipleship and receive the joy of everlasting life in Christ. And we pray all this in the name of Jesus, your son. Amen. Stand or sit or do whatever as you are able because we are about to have our opening hymn. This is a joyous opening hymn. Here I am to worship. So wherever you are, sing safely but loudly.
King of all days, oh so highly exalted, glorious in heaven above. Humbly you came to the earth you created, all for love's sake became poor. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're altogether lovely, altogether worthy, altogether wonderful to me. I'll never know how much it cost to see my sin upon that cross. I'll never know how much it cost to see my sin upon that cross. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're altogether lovely, altogether worthy, altogether wonderful to me. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're altogether lovely, altogether worthy, altogether wonderful to me. That was our praise band. It is so good to hear them again. So let us turn to the Lord for the word of God, with our prayer for illumination. Holy Spirit, open our hearts to receive your word. Reveal to us the good news and enable us to trust in the promise of salvation in Jesus Christ, amen. Last week, the first reading that we did, or second reading, was from Genesis, and it was the covenant that God established with Abraham. Start over. Second reading last week was the covenant that God established with Noah. And so today, we will be going back into Genesis for our first reading. And this is the covenant that God established with Abraham. And as we learned last week, God's covenant comes down upon us, and it is God being the first mover, the major mover, and he's in covenant with us, even regardless of our failings. This is from the book of Genesis, chapter 17, verses 1 to 7, and then verses 15 and 16. When Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am God Almighty. Walk before me faithfully and be blameless. And then I will make my covenant between me and you and will greatly increase your numbers. Abraham fell face down. And God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You will be the father of many nations. No longer will you be called Abraham. Your name will now be Abraham, for I have made you a father of many nations. I will make you very fruitful. I will make nations of you, and kings will come from you. I will establish my covenant, 
as an everlasting covenant between me and you and your descendants after you for the generations to come to be your God and the God of your descendants after you. And God also said to Abraham, as for Sarai, your wife, you are no longer to call her Sarai. Her name will be Sarah, and I will bless her and will surely give you a son by her. I will bless her so that she will be the mother of nations. Kings of peoples will come from her. Our second reading this morning is from the New Testament. The Gospel of Mark, chapter 9, verses 2 to 9. After six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John with him and led them up a high mountain where they were all alone. And there he was transfigured before them. His clothes became dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the world could bleach them. And there appeared before them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. And Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say. They were so frightened. And then a cloud appeared and covered them, and a voice came from the cloud. This is my son, whom I love. Listen to him. And suddenly, when they looked around, they no longer saw anyone with them except Jesus. And as they were coming down the mountain, Jesus gave them orders not to tell anyone what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. These are the words of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So we are celebrating Transfiguration Sunday today. You just heard the story in our gospel excerpt from Mark. And so the name of my sermon is, Jesus said, don't tell anyone who I am. Let me ask you a question. Can I tell you a secret? Can you keep a secret? You see, in the Gospel of Mark, Jesus wants us to keep his secret. He told the disciples as they were coming down the mountain, don't tell anyone who I am. And this is what's referred to in biblical terms as the messianic secret phenomena. You see, Jesus kept concealing his messianic identity, especially in the Gospel of Mark, over and over and over again. Now, why did he do this? Why did he need people to keep his secret? Partly he did this because he understood that the disciples, even though they were with him day after day, still did not quite understand who he was. And they still did not quite understand what he came to do. And when he tried to explain that he came to 
suffer and die on the cross and rise from the dead, the disciples were completely clueless. And another reason Jesus had this messianic secret phenomena was that he did not necessarily he did not want to rile up unnecessarily the Jewish authorities because he did a pretty good job of riling them up anyway or the Roman authorities. And so if we look especially in the gospel of Mark, Jesus time and time and time again told people to keep his secret. He told a demon to keep his secret in Mark chapter 1, verse 34. And he healed many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak. He told people who he healed not to say how they got well. In Mark 1, Jesus healed a leper and then said to the leper, see that you say nothing to anyone, but go, show yourself to the priest and offer for your cleansing what Moses commanded for a proof to them. And he told his apostles not to tell anyone in Mark 8, 30, and he strictly charged them to tell no one about him. And then again, as we just read in Mark 9, 9, as they were coming down the mountain, he charged them to tell no one what they had seen. So I'm looking at this messianic secret phenomena. I'm looking at these and many more examples in the Gospel of Mark where Jesus said, do not tell anyone who I am. And I am standing here just trying to make sense of this. I'm wondering, should I even talk about this this morning? Is this still supposed to be secret? Is there a memo somewhere that I, I'm missing? Dear God, please come into my mind and heart this morning. Let the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart, bring your secret into its radiant light. Help me share with this, your beloved community, the love and grace and sacrifice and forgiveness and, and wonder of your life in this world. And I ask all this in the name of our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So let's look at what happened on the mountain. Jesus went up and there was a big white light and it was radiating from Jesus. Everybody here has taken a picture, right? Of one kind or another. And a, another word for a picture is a photograph. And photograph comes from two Greek words, photo meaning light and graph meaning writing. And so a photograph is something written in light. And if I was to hold up a cell phone and take a selfie, I would be making a photograph written with light of myself. And so as I thought about this text this morning, I realized that as Jesus was transfigured, the light radiating from Jesus in front of his disciples was his way of taking a Selfie was his way of writing with light, was his way of showing his disciples who he was. And so Jesus' secret selfie is very clear. Moses and Elijah are present with him. Moses represented the law, the first five books of the Old Testament or the Jewish Bible. And Elijah represented the prophets, all the other books in the Jewish Bible. And Jesus was telling us as part of his identity that he came to fulfill the law and the prophets, Moses and Elijah. Jesus' secret selfie is so clear. 
You see, Mark's gospel has three major statements about Jesus' identity. The first statement about his identity is in his baptism, when God's voice declares in Mark 1, 11, you are my son, the beloved. And then at the very end of Jesus' life, after he had died on the cross, when a Roman soldier says in Mark 15, verse 39, Truly, this man was God's son. But in this middle statement between his life and death, here on this mountain, as he is transfigured, please note who God is speaking to. Because in the baptism of Jesus, God was speaking to Jesus. You are my beloved son. But now, in our gospel reading this morning in Mark chapter 9, verse 7, these words are for us. God is no longer only speaking to his son. God is speaking to all of us when he says, this is my beloved son. See, Jesus' secret selfie is clearer and clearer because if we note what God then says, God then tells us, clear as a bell, listen to him. And these words, listen to him, they're not just for the three disciples there. They were not just for the people of Israel at the time of Jesus. These words are directed to us. Listen to him. And this is way easier said than done. Igor Stravinsky was a Russian music composer. And he was very aware about people listening to his music. And he said this about listening. To listen is an effort. Just to hear has no merit. A duck can hear. So Igor Stravinsky is telling us really clearly, it is hard to listen. And yet in this gospel, God is telling us very clearly, listen to him. And if we continue on with Jesus' secret selfie and the clarity of it, Reverend Edward Marquardt has this beautiful quote. Jesus' body was transformed from an earthly body into a heavenly body, from a human body into a resurrection body. So Jesus' secret selfie is giving us so much information. It is showing us that Jesus is fulfilling the law and the prophets. It is showing us that Father God is speaking directly to us, identifying Jesus as his son. It is showing us that we are commanded and called to listen to Jesus. And you know, the first verse, the beginning of the Gospel of Mark, this is the good news of salvation. Well, this Gospel of Mark is also showing us that our bodies will also be transformed in heaven as glorious, dazzling, radiant bodies of light as Jesus was transformed in front of his disciples. And finally, Jesus' secret selfie is so clear. Jesus has Peter and James and John coming down from the mountain to be light riders for their brothers and sisters to spread the word of Jesus, the light of Jesus to everyone they meet. So Royal Oak, beloved worshiping community, we are called to do this today. We are called to write with God's radiant light of grace and love. And we are called to see God's radiant light of grace and love in others. 
So if we are called to be right lighters, light writers, I'm sorry, right, no, let me get this straight, light writers, if we are called to write with the radiant light, which is the love and grace of God, then if we are using this light, we are essentially making selfies of ourselves. But these are not regular old cell phone selfies. We are called to make Christian selfies. And what would our Christian selfie look like? Now, God's grace and love transfigured Jesus on the mountain, bleached his garments whiter than anybody could bleach them. And that is the love of God that shines within us. And one of my joys as a pastor is to preach from this pulpit every Sunday. And on many of the Sundays, there's sunlight coming in through the window on my right. It is a beautiful shaft of light, and the colors in this window are illuminated so beautifully. We, as people, children of God, are similarly lit as stained glass windows are lit with God's light. There's a psychiatrist about 30 years ago that was a pioneer in studying death and dying. Her name was Elizabeth Kubler-Ross. I found her books depressing. But she says this most beautiful and illuminating thing, her words. People are like stained glass windows. They sparkle and shine when the sun is out. But when the darkness comes, their true beauty is only revealed if there is a light from within. What would our Christian selfie look like? I believe it would be us holding and cherishing the light that is within each person. I believe it is, would be us lifting up that light. Maybe moving away pain and sorrow to let that light shine. Maybe being a listening ear. A comforting phone call. A delivery of Hershey's kisses. A box of cards made by children for Valentine's Day. Our Christian selfie is much harder to take than the usual selfie because we need to be connected with the love and light of God so we can do God's work. And we have to be careful because if we are too full of our own light, Will we be able to see the light of others? You know, this is probably a good way of saying the problem of the Pharisees. They were so full of themselves and the importance light that they totally missed the fact that the Son of God was standing next to them. Another example of this, if we go outdoors on a sunny day, we cannot see the stars. Oh, they're there, but the light of the sun is obliterating them. But the more we in our Christian selfie can look like a humble servant, the more we follow the light of Jesus, the more other people's lights can shine and shine and shine. Consider looking into the face of someone you love, spouse, friend, granddaughter, grandson, dog, cat, 
And when they look back at you with love in their eyes, you are seeing their light. And you know how you can bring that forth. So, Jesus, secret transfiguration selfie, is really in our gospel this morning to show us the light that we are called to see and to share. Now, in the Gospel of Mark, there was good reason for the messianic secret phenomena. There was good reason for Jesus to tell his disciples, don't say anything about this. But you remember the last phrase of that last verse this morning, until after his death and resurrection? And so, we now have free reign to share our Christian selfies and Jesus' secret selfies and be writers with the light of God's love to everyone we meet. And so on this cloudy, rainy day, let us pray and give thanks that we can be God's writers of light and love in this world today. Imagine we have just come down from the mountain and imagine Jesus no longer has to tell us, wait till I've died. But Jesus is telling us, go forth, make disciples of all nations and bring my light and love to everyone you meet. Amen. Every Sunday we share our blessings and concerns. And this is important to do. It is important to do because we cannot hug each other in person. We cannot see each other. We cannot comfort each other. We cannot celebrate with each other. But before we get to our blessings and concerns, I, I found a, a quote from a Methodist pastor, Reverend Jan Richardson. And I could not use this in my sermon, just didn't fit. But this fits beautifully to introduce our blessings and concerns. Reverend Richardson's words. The story of the transformation is about opening our eyes to glory and allowing that glory to alter us and becoming willing to walk where it leads us. It assures us that the gifts received on the mountaintop will continue to illuminate us even when we walk in the valley of the shadow. Our blessings and concerns, we are walking in God's light on level ground with our blessings and we are walking in the valley of the shadow with our concerns. So, February was a very, I don't know how to say this, fertile month for many people many years ago. Because we are giving thanks and celebrating the birthday of Jan Dooley. We are giving thanks and celebrating the birthday of Sarah Parker. Exactly today, Sarah Parker. We give thanks and celebrate the birthday of Chuck Stoner. If you see him, ask him how old he is. There's a story to tell. He was born on the 29th. We give thanks and celebrate the birthday of Travis Hammond. We give thanks and celebrate the birthday of Jim Riley. We give thanks and celebrate the birthday of Maureen Nevins. And there's more. We give thanks and celebrate the birthday of Taylor Bryan. We give thanks and celebrate the birthday of Doug Hathaway. And we give thanks and celebrate the anniversary of Jan and Dennis Dooley. Wow. 
We give thanks that Carol Ann Burkhart is recovering well from her surgery. And we give thanks for the monumental work of Bruce Burkhart as he created our new Royal Oak UMC website. It looks great and it has many wonderful features. Bruce has moved our website into cutting edge website-ness, whatever that means, but it's really cool. Um, we give thanks for the work of our administrative board that will be meeting this Wednesday at seven o'clock, 7.30? Seven. 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 Well, okay, seven. And all are invited, a Zoom link will be emailed. Um, one of the topics the administrative board will talk about is when, if, to reopen our sanctuary. We give thanks for the work of our worship committee that's meeting on Thursday, also on Zoom. At 7.30. There you go, got it. We give thanks to Sue and Aubrey Greenhall and their tireless work they did delivering baskets of snacks and energy bars and Hershey's Kisses and all of the ways they drove around and delivered joy. Thank you. Sarah Parker gives thanks that her brother-in-law Frank is out of the ICU and COVID ward and is recovering at home. Wow. That is a good day when you get out of the ICU and the COVID ward. And she gives thanks that his heart blockages were treated by the insertion of two stents and prays that his recovery goes smoothly. We give thanks that more COVID vaccinations are finally happening here and pray that all our members will be vaccinated soon. And also please continue to wear your masks as an act of love towards others. Those are all the ways we are thankful, but we are also walking in the valley of shadow. So we pray for the U.S.'s 512,000 deaths and over 28 million people infected with COVID. We ask again and again and again prayers for Robin Allen and her husband, Pastor Ben Allen, and her children, their children, Caitlin, Lily, Hayden, and Joey, and all her family as she battles pancreatic cancer. Um, please go to caringbridge.org. <clears throat> you can type in Robin Allen's name and you can help support her on this journey. She um, is, however, last I heard, able to resume chemotherapy, which is a good, nuts, good sign. Uh, da, 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 da. Right. Um, we ask for prayers for Sherry Kojic, that she have a good visit with her cardiologist this week. Suzanne Hood asks for prayers for her college roommate, Heather, that her serious stomach issues get better. And J.R. Burkhart asks for prayers for one of his former students and a member of St. Luke's Bellevue, just down the road, uh, Robbie Batson. Last Sunday at this time, he received a liver transplant. He is now recovering. But this is this 23-year-old young man's second liver transplant, so please pray. Joni and Dave Zimmerman ask for prayers for the granddaughter of their good friend, Dave Matson. Ava is eight months old. She was diagnosed this past December with both liver cancer and lung cancer. After being in treatment for three months, the doctors have realized that it is terminal. And she is spending her last weeks at home with her family. Please pray for Ava's comfort as well as for the family during this difficult time. Jan Dooley asks for prayers for the Hinson family. Uh, their son, beloved son Cameron, died last month. She reports that he was involved in a car accident a year ago that left him a quadriplegic. And his mom believes that she, that Cameron died of a broken heart. 
that he was not able to face the reality of being a quadriplegic. Barbara Burkhart asks us to lift up in prayer her neighbor's granddaughter who just came home and is doing better. Please pray for continued healing and Barbara's neighbor says, thank you for your prayers. Barbara also asks us to lift up her longtime friend Malvina Fields in prayer. Leanne and Jimmy Hutchinson ask for continued prayers for Lee's parents Alice and Bob Graham, and let us not forget all the residents of nursing homes and assisted living facilities as we deal with this pandemic and as they are our most vulnerable population. On a personal note, I ask for prayers that my right retina stays attached and that the vision in my right eye returns to more or less normal. We ask for prayers for all our school children and staff and personnel for all of the challenges and changes they are going through this year. So let us pray that they get some kind of education from all of these trials. And many of our church members, Sandy James, Tracy Abbott, Dana Hadaway, Sherry Kojic, Jan Dooley, and many others ask for Christ, love, and peace, and hope, and fortitude, and patience for our country and for our world. And so, dear God, grant these prayers by your grace and stir up in us the will to seek out your kingdom with the dedication of our lives in ministry to the needs of this world, let us be clear who we are as Christians, bringing the love and light of you to all of the people we meet. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. This is a good time to pray. So let us pray as Jesus taught us how to pray. Let us say the Lord's Prayer, a prayer which is being said today by billions and billions and billions of billions of Christians in church services all over our world. Let us join in this communion of other Christians and say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So, beloved Royal Oak Worshiping Community, we gather every Sunday to worship. We gather 17 times a week in other online activities to worship. And one way we can make the work of this worship go forward, one way we can bring God's kingdom more fully into this world, is by asking for your donations. Your donations of prayers are needed. Your donations of food and non-perishables are needed. And your donations of finances, funding, are needed. And so you can mail us a check to P.O. Box 126, Royal Oak, Maryland, 21662. Or you can go to our brand new website, Click on the button that says make a donation. That'll take you to Tithely, 
And once you register with Tithely, we are all set. So, Almighty God, we thank you for the covenant that you established with Noah and Abraham and Sarah. Please accept these offerings with the dedication of our lives that we may be for the world the light of your love and a testament to your enduring promise. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us go to our closing song, a favorite of mine, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arms. Once again, that was our praise band, and <laughs> what a joy, what a light they bring into our sanctuary every time they sing. It is awesome. So, Royal Oak, beloved, worshiping community, wherever you are, and whatever day of the week you are listening to this service, I love you with the love of Jesus, and that is the most radiant love there is. And so, beloved worshiping community, go forth as beacons of light, transfigured as Jesus was by the grace of God. Let us take that light into the world and let the God of covenant faithfulness enfold you. Let the beloved Son, Jesus, encourage you and literally enlighten you 
And may the Holy Spirit descend upon you in blessing this day and every day. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made, I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made.